it's AG Sports, guys. Hey, uh, another video, another pick. What can I say? Another dollar, or what was it? Another day, another dollar, another day, another nickel. Something like that. Who cares? Anyways, I uh, did have a pick I want to give for you guys this week, or another pick, I should say. And this one is actually going to be a teaser. I know a lot of people are really into teasers. Um, I mean, I think in the long run, they're actually kind of bad for you. But if you know where to pick and choose and maybe do some of these Wong teasers... Anytime you hear Wong teaser, just know that that just means you're getting basically through the three and the seven. That's really all it means uh, because those at the time when that book was written, the three and the seven were the obvious key numbers. To a certain extent, they still are. If you've been following the videos for a little while, guys, you know that six is also quickly becoming a key number in the NFL. Um, with some saying that the two is also... You know, starting to creep up there as well. The two has actually showed up seven percent of the time, which is the same amount as the six and the seven, and then uh, number ten has shown up six percent of the time. So, the two, the six, and the seven are all equal key numbers, at least for this year. Uh, with ten being a minor key number, and three is the big one. Three does show up fifteen percent of the time. So, you want to try to get that three as many times as you can. And a lot of times the teaser is the way to do it, especially like in this Patriots game. So, again, one of the previous picks for this week was the Patriots Colts over 44. Um, that has gone up pretty exponentially. It went up to 45 and a half. At a, at a certain point, it actually touched 46 for a second before we got some pushback on that. So, if you have not already gotten on this one... I actually don't mind it at the 45 and a half. Obviously, if you can find it somewhere better, if you want to tease it down, that's fine as well. Uh, the 44 is a key number when it comes to these games. Again, just for anybody who hasn't been listening, it is 41 for lower scoring games. 44, 50, uh, 47, and 51 are your key numbers. Uh, 48 is kind of creeping up there as well. But that all being said, let's go ahead and get into the pick. So the teaser is going to be the Patriots plus eight and a half and then the Eagles minus one. But let me give you some breakdowns on this. I'm going to start with the Patriots first because it is a little bit of a faster breakdown. Uh, let's get right into that. So your Patriots Colts game. As far as the DVOA numbers are concerned, the, it does have the Patriots as two-point favorites in this game. Um, there were some adjustments that happened last night to DVOA kind of different but either way they did tweak the numbers just a little bit and it brings us to a two-point favorite for the Patriots right now they're actually getting two points as a dog now the thing is I don't think the two points is really going to matter a whole lot because I expect a lot of points to be scored in this game uh, this 23 to 25 is what the grading algorithm puts it at and I really think that you're probably going to be on the higher end of both of their spectrums. Uh, you're probably looking at like realistically like a 28 to 27, 28, 30, somewhere in there for at least one of these teams with the other team coming in at like 24 or 21. So I do think this is going to get over 50 points. And anytime you have a lot of points scored, you need a bigger spread. You know, if there's a 51 total points and they're only going to give you two points for the spread, it's not really going to do a whole lot. So if you like the favorite, that's fine. Uh, if you like the dog, you don't really want to be taking that few, those few points in such a high scoring game. Um, for that reason, though, I am, that's exactly why I'm teasing them up. I actually do project the Patriots to win this game, but... More importantly, when it comes to gambling, I do not see them losing by more than a possession. So the tease up to the 8.5 is going to get us through that 3, through the 7, through the 6, and to the 8, and up to the 8.5. So even if they lose by that you know, two-point conversion or whatever, we're still going to get the cover with that. As far as why do I think that they are going to win, uh, a couple things here. So the Patriots have a much better defense than the Colts do. And the Colts don't have a bad defense, you know, to be honest with you. But the defensive EDSR on the Patriots, whether you are running or passing on them, they only allow 46% of your plays to be successful. Uh, that's just, that's tops in the league. That's almost impossible to find, especially on both sides of the ball. Usually the team is really good at stopping the pass or really good at stopping the run. And you kind of have to funnel everything into one direction for example, the Cowboys have a great EDSR against the pass. They know how to stop that pass, but when it comes to the run, they get kind of blown off the line. They have too many finesse players, and that's kind of the way to, to beat them. This Patriots team, though, they're really not going to give you an easy out either way. And 
because the Colts do get one dimensional, it's a little bit easier for the Patriots to stop them. The Colts do like to run the ball. They do have only a 46% rush rate, but in saying that, they run out of some very exotic looks. The Colts run out of 11 personnel more than anybody else in the league, and that's really hard to stop as far as defense is concerned because you have your defense spread out. There's receivers on the on the field you have to account for, so you have to kind of get your, your nickel and your dime packages out there, but you still have to stop a big man in Jonathan Taylor. So there's a whole lot of moving parts in this one. Really, the best thing the Patriots do, though, is they have guys like Hightower as a linebacker who come up and fill those holes. So no matter how many receivers you put out there, they have their linebackers out there. For the most part, they leave them out there. And these are not some regular, you know, just average linebackers. These are huge guys. They're super tough to move around. They're like 240 plus. I think they're like 260 something plus as far as weight is concerned. And usually you have your guards pull or coming, you know, running up on a run block to try and get these guys. These guys are too big, too powerful, too fast. And for the most part, they are very successful at shutting down your runs. And if Jonathan Taylor can't get past that front line, it's really hard to get him going. A lot of time the Colts kind of predict that when they spread out that offense and the defense has to match them, they end up with a one-on-one uh, kind of situation where Jonathan Taylor is running up against the corner, he's running up against the safety, somebody in that secondary, and you're asking this 195-pound guy to come up and tackle this big dude who's going to just run over him. And through the course of the game, they start making some business decisions. So that's probably not going to be the case here. I do think the Patriots are going to slow that Colts run attack down but at the same time again I do believe the Colts are going to have some success just because the Patriots are going to be having to stop some looks they really haven't seen this year Um, they can watch a lot of film they can project project and predict what they're going to do but at the end of the day you still have to execute and it's probably going to take them some time to adjust that and Frank Reich is just a great coach if you look back throughout the years he has had some success against Bill even in the Super Bowl where he was a coordinator for the Eagles against that Patriots team Frank Reich does know how to play to really to his advantage and so he's just a great coach I think that they are going to have a higher scoring game like I said I think this game in total is going to be a higher scoring game um that all being said the Patriots plus eight and a half if they can keep that Jonathan Taylor running attack in check and they can make the Colts rely on Carson Wentz I think it's going to be hard for the Colts to get this win I don't care that they're playing in Indianapolis I don't care that really you know everything else seems even in this game the Patriots and Bill Belichick are going to win this game or they're going to keep it very very close where it's going to come down to a nail biter as in like a one possession game and last thing here guys in case you did not know the Patriots have actually had the number one most efficient passing offense this entire season that's ridiculous for a rookie quarterback he's performing way above his pay grade way better than most of us thought he would be even throughout next year so that quarterback play with Mac Jones is going to keep this offense going and yeah you can say we're going to sell it to stop the run because they have a rookie quarterback and maybe that will help but Mac Jones knows how to make the passes that you give him so if you sell out to stop that run he's gonna kill you on the back end he's gonna keep those sticks moving and I just don't do not see any possible way that the Colts shut down every attack on this Patriots offense but I see a lot of ways the Patriots can slow down the Colts so all of that being said Patriots plus eight and a half is the first leg of this tease and now as for the Eagles again we are teasing them down to one so it'll be the Eagles minus one as the other end of this teaser it was minus four earlier in the week, and I think it was even minus three for like an hour or two on Sunday night or Monday morning, uh, and I didn't jump on it, unfortunately. I really thought Washington was going to have a good chance of actually winning this game, and I really thought that the game was going to stay under for the first like day or two or even up until yesterday morning, but the injuries that have come out with Washington have totally changed that, um, not just the perception of their defense, but kind of their whole game plan so let's take a look at the injuries real quick and first of all before I get off this page the DVOA numbers do have 
the Eagles as seven point favorites. So where the line is at, at right now is pretty accurate as far as my numbers are concerned. Again, I wish I would have grabbed the Eagles minus three, but we are going to tease it down to the one. So we're going to get that three back. We're going to get the six and the seven. We're going to have a lot of, you know, a lot of good numbers coming with that tease. So let's take a look at the injuries for Washington. First of all, as far as the offense is concerned, I didn't even know this. Kyle Allen is out. Ryan Fitzpatrick, obviously, is still in the IR. J.D. McKissick, I don't really expect him to be back this week. He is questionable. Terry McLaurin is also questionable. Um, he had a concussion. He may or may not be back. We'll see how far along he gets. Same thing with Curtis Samuel, also questionable. Really, this offense has a lot of questions all around. And even Logan Thomas, who's a bigger piece of this offense than a lot of us like to give him credit for. He's an IR. He's going to be missing. This offense looks all torn up. But wait until you see the defense. There is just more O's and there's more outs than in, really, at this point. So if you look at the defensive line, obviously Chase Young is out. Uh, Montez Sweat is out. We have James uh, Smith out. Jonathan Allen out. Casey Tuhill out. These guys were the core of that defense. They were in there to not only put pressure on the quarterback, but to stop the run. And they had been pretty successful at it, even though it didn't always look like it. They had been pretty successful at at least slowing down defenses. I'm sorry, slowing down offenses and specifically slowing down the rushing attacks. Aside from the defensive line, though, you also have uh, really a lot of these linebackers out. I think they have, what, one, two? They have two healthy linebackers in Jamin Davis and Landon Collins. Um, Nate Orchard, who they just got, I want to say, off like a practice squad. He's possibly going to play in this game. And then... The older, you know, Cole Holcomb and Jordan, whatever his name is, they're both questionable. So I expect them to play out of necessity, really, more than anything. But they're not going to be at a full strength. So Landon Collins is the best one here. But at the end of the day, you're going to enter this game with possibly five healthy linebackers, possibly, in a game where you're going to need to move these guys around. They're going to be flying all over the place. You're going to have to keep up with a heavy rushing attack from the Eagles. And they just don't have the pieces up front to stop it or to stay engaged the entire time. You're asking, like, basically half of a team to stay engaged and to stay on top of this heavy run attack from the Eagles. I think the Eagles are going to take advantage of that. The Eagles are just going to run all over these guys. And even if it's not successful early in the game, I think they're going to work on just tiring this team out, doing whatever they have to do, running, you know, horizontally to keep these guys just gassed after the first quarter after the first half I do see the Washington defense slowing down quite a bit and the Eagles being able to just move the ball however and whenever they want now the only thing I will say is that Jalen Hurts is still coming back from a high ankle injury now this would be three weeks from the initial injury and usually that high ankle sprain is about a three to six week injury the guys who recover really quickly and fast on that kind of stuff they usually get back at about the three-week mark. So I do think he's going to probably play in this game. I just don't know if we'll see the running that we used to from him. And that is kind of not worrisome, but it just kind of annoys me because this is a game I really thought he was going to do great in. If you look back at some of these games that Washington has played, when they played the Giants, Daniel Jones had nine rushes for 95 yards. This was back, I believe, like week two of the season. Uh, Then they played the Chiefs later on. Patrick Mahomes, three rushes, 31 yards. And they also play the Panthers, uh, one of the Cam Newton's first games in this year. And it's 10 for 46. So they just had huge success on the ground, four quarterbacks. And I really do expect Jalen Hurts to have that same success if he's healthy enough to run. And that's a big if. If he can do it and if they can tape him upright and if he can kind of play through that awkwardness, that that feeling of like, hey, my ankle isn't strong enough. I don't have the support here. If he can move through that and he can start playing, he should have a great day on the ground. It's a really good sh- shot for him, a really good spot start for him, especially if you're playing fantasy. Um, keep an eye on just the injury report, really, but you got to know what you're getting into because he's either going to do really, really good or really, really bad, and I would love to take his rushing prop in this game, depending on what it's at. I want to take the over only because I know Washington will give up those big plays to him. But again, we got to know that he's going to be able to take advantage of that. So all of that being said, um, 
the Eagles just look to be the side here as far as just winning. And a lot of that is just because of injury. Washington, it, it would have been a closer game. And like I said, in my opinion, I thought really Washington had a chance to come in here and win this game prior to all of these injuries. Because of that, I just do not see them being able to keep up with the Eagles at all. And again, that explains a lot of this huge line movement that we've seen. Because again, it went from minus three to minus seven. Um, as far as getting into the numbers here, the Eagles do run four, I'm sorry, 51% of the time. The Washington team only gives up 44% as far as you know successful plays to the rushing attack. But again, because of those injuries, I think we're going to see that get propped up a little bit this week, probably closer to like a 50% success rate. And if that's the case, the Washington football team, I'm sorry, I keep wanting to say the damn word and you know what word I'm talking about. I do believe that Washington's going to have a long day ahead of them. They're just going to get gassed. There's no other way to say this. If the Eagles do not take advantage of this, if the Eagles try to play a quick pass game and get off the field, it's going to be the worst game plan ever, and Sirianni deserves to be fired. He needs to be running the ball, stick with what he's been doing the last couple weeks, and I, I fully expect him to do so, and I think that you're going to see this game probably start off a little bit slower. It's probably going to be a lower scoring first half or a lower scoring first quarter, but in the second half, I think the Eagles dominate and take over this game. As far as passing is concerned, this is the one thing that concerns me is that Washington does pass 55% of the time. Now, a lot of that is because they have been down in a lot of games and the Eagles give up a 54% uh, success rate to the pass. So do yeah, so does Washington's defense, I guess is what I should be saying. So the, while the Eagles don't pass as highly or uh, with high of volume, as Washington, I do expect that when they do go to the pass, it's going to be there. You know, I do think Devontae Smith is going to have a decent shot to have a good game. You know, they should be able to do what they want on the offensive side of the ball as far as the Eagles are concerned. Maintain that possession. Really just run all over these guys. Again, getting back to gassing them, kind of a stamina thing. Just rotations because they don't have enough players on defense as far as Washington's concerned. I don't know what Washington can do to really win this game. On one hand, you would think, hey, we want to take advantage of this shitty you know, passing defense, and let's pass the ball, let's get going, and score a lot of points, and try to just outscore them, which would lean you to the over, and that's kind of where I lean. I'm not going to put any money on that, but I would lean over in this game. But at the same time, Terry McLaurin may not even be in. Cam Sims may not even be in. So who are they really going to pass to? Um, Gibson could still have a good day. And that could be great. That could be the driving force. But you really got like one guy you're going to be looking at possibly to move this ball. Um, kind of the argument for the under would be that the Eagles get out to a big lead by second or third quarter. And then from there, they're just running the ball. Washington has no success on the offensive side of the ball, which is very possible, especially if they're missing a lot of their key players. And we end up with a game that's like 28 to 3 or 24 to 3 or something like that. So. There is an argument made for both the over and the under. If you really wanted to get involved with the over-under side, I would really go with the first half, and I'd probably go first half under, only because I do expect that first half to be a little bit slower, that Washington defense is still kind of have some juice and some gas throughout that first half. And last time I checked, it was 21 to 21 and a half for the first half. I do think even in a good day, even when both teams are fully healthy, you're probably looking at like a 21 point, first half so again i'm not putting any money on the uh, totals but eagles minus one paired up with patriots plus eight and a half is the tease uh just again quick recap the only concerns in this game are how healthy is jalen hurts and how effective is this washington passing effect you know game going to be if Terry McLaurin is out, I do expect that you are going to see this line move even more. You're going to see the Eagles be even bigger favorites. So you may want to jump on this sooner than later, or as soon as you get any sort of hint that he is going to be out, you're going to want to jump on the Eagles because this line is going to keep going up as more and more people see this injury report, this depth chart, especially as we get closer to actual game time and you have just general public come in and smashing the Eagles because of the perception. Let's do it now. Thank you again. Hopefully this was helpful. I will put the rest of the picks in the description below. Have a great day.